Hello and welcome to the show. I am your science communicator, Alex Giorfanos, and it's about time for another episode of Thoughts from an Engineer. And a lot is going on, especially in space. The global dust storm is clearing on Mars, and we're waiting for opportunity to wake up and respond to us. Elon Musk is thinking of making Tesla a private company like SpaceX and pulling it off of the publicly traded market. The Parker Solar Probe launched successfully aboard the ULA's Delta IV heavy rocket. And to top it all off, the commercial crew astronauts were announced for both SpaceX's Crew Dragon and Boeing's CST-100 Starliner, beginning the incredible journey of two developmental American commercial spacecraft launching aboard American rockets on American soil for the first time since the space shuttle was retired. There's so many things to talk about. So while I gather my ideas for those future episodes, I wanted to share my thoughts on the evolution and changes in my life and with the show, as well as some continuing thoughts on the Space Force and exploring the idea of looking at space as a war-fighting domain and the idea of the United States as dominating space. But first, let's do a little bit on my own evolution and all the changes in my life and with the podcast, it's been almost five years of podcasting for me, four years with Today in Space coming up in November. For those of you who don't know, Today in Space won first place in independent podcasting uh, production in the United States for public access. We were given the Hometown Media Award from the Alliance of Community Media, which is an organization housing most public access for town, education, and government broadcasting in the country including things like NASA TV. So it's a really big honor. honor. Ooh, I can't say that right. It's a really big honor. <laughs> and I want to thank every listener of this podcast for subscribing and being a part of it, and in including telling your friends about and family about us. And I want to thank Nord Community Media for allowing me to put the show on public access television and for believing in the show enough to submit it for the competition. Thank you for helping us spread love and spread science. This is such a cool award, and I'm wicked excited and truly honored. We are also moving locations. Over the next few weeks, I'll be moving to my new place, which means we'll have a new studio and dedicated space for both Today in Space and AG3D printing. There's lots of really amazing things to come in the near future, so make sure to subscribe to stay up to date. We'll make sure to hang up the award in the new studio as well. Speaking of change, let's get back to some space topics, shall we? There has been some change in the development of the Space Force, and I've had a lot of questions about it recently, even though it, I definitely recommend checking out the first episode we did on the Space Force, I'd like to go further with it in this episode. You know, the last episode was really discussing the what the Space Force was at the time, and uh, a new branch of the military like the Air Force. Uh, we also covered the latest NASA space directives, which outline the direction NASA will take the next four years and potentially in the future, long term. But seeing as the Space Force has developed a little bit further, I want to touch on a few things and share my thoughts as usual. Our exploration of thought will revolve around the idea, is a Space Force necessary? I'll introduce some ideas to get the conversation started, but the whole idea of this is to get us to think past the general clickbait headlines and binary thinking of this partisan, political, yet also national defense thing called a Space Force and ask whether or not it's even necessary. I would recommend you check out Vice President Pence's recent speech outlining more direction for the Space Force. Uh, links will be below in the show notes, and there's also a Department of Defense paper that outlines and overviews the actual breakdown of how a Space Force will actually operate. But what I want to talk about is whether or not we should see space as a war-fighting domain. I agree that it's inevitable because it has happened in the land, sea, and air, and will probably inevitably require military intervention in space. Space will not be a utopian, peaceful endeavor. Our sci-fi has covered that pretty thoroughly, and we did start the space race after Sputnik was sent into orbit. So, yeah, th there will be a need for military presence at some point. But if we do, I think our best path forward, the thing that gives us the best role of the alternate universe dice for a future, 
in space is by focusing on prevention of space war. There's an alternate universe where there's a giant space industrial complex and there's oppressive intergalactic kingdoms in charge, but going full lockdown DEFCOM 5 into space dominance now gets us to that space industrial complex the quickest. But we're not at war in space. We won the space race and have been dominating, have been the dominating presence in space since then. I think that we shouldn't be focusing on having a war in space. We should be focusing on preventing war in space and creating a war, a world uh, where humans can travel and explore space for exploration's sake, for scientific research, and not for war. Obviously, you have to prepare for the scenario where an act of war occurs in order to prevent it. But any further than that, I believe, will only stoke the flame of starting a real war in space. Freedom and access to space for everyone will, in my opinion, douse the flame of war and allow for exploration to occur. Military intervention and restricted access to space keeps us on Earth and unable to explore. No one wants that. But there are also other realistic reasons I see the military and a space force being necessary, and why a space force might make sense. For example, we'll probably need a military presence when we start mining asteroids for rare earth metals. They're called rare earth metals for a reason, because there really isn't a lot of them on the planet, and we probably got our supply from an asteroid impact. The good thing is there are a lot of these rare metal asteroids in our asteroid belt, waiting to be prospected and mined for their orbital ores. And we're not talking about billions of dollars, not even trillions of dollars. There are early asteroid value estimates in the quintillion of dollars. You'll need some kind of space force, police force, to make sure we don't have humans sending pirate ships to commandeer or pillage your asteroid for its valuable materials. We need to set the precedent on how to properly approach this kind of inevitable interaction in space. And I feel like America can do a really good job of that. Because, look, whenever there are resources involved, it's almost inevitable there's going to be some kind of war to gain control of them. And if we look back at a lot of wars over resources, it's because they were limited. And now this is just an idea. But if we could change that trend, if we could bring an asteroid back so massive it completely oversaturates the amount of metal, like titanium, uh, and makes it value, its value drop, there might not be a place for that war. Think of the salt wars that happened throughout human history. That's right, humans went to war over salt. It was a necessary resource to make sure your food lasted even remotely long. Salt was the only thing that kept food long enough to sustain a population and enable humans to not have to hunt every single time they needed food or gather. In part, the invention of the refrigerator leveled the value of salt and I think the same thing could happen with the introduction of unheard amounts of space titanium or any kind of material. There would be no more scarcity and a practically non-limited supply, especially if space mining becomes routine. I don't see wars happening in the scouting of asteroids or even in the retrieval of these asteroids. Where I do see intervention happening is on the location in orbit where these asteroids will be kept to mine and those rare earth metals. Intervention could also occur on the return trip uh, when the mining has already been done. In both those scenarios, I do see the need for something like a space force or simply training the military branches for such these missions that are already doing this kind of work already. But if it makes more sense to have one dedicated branch of the military to deal with the space domain, then yes, a space force is necessary. Another example of why it would be necessary comes from our interview with Brian Stoffel of Stoffel Aerospace, which I highly recommend you listen to. Here's one company that's able to 3D print rockets out of plastic, launch them within a week. And it's not a large payload, but it makes access to space frequent and without limitations of launch sites. So we're going to have to figure out how to defend and moderate these launches and make sure someone doesn't just strap something to 3D printed rockets and launch it wherever. You know, it, it's a tool and it can be used for good, it can be used for evil. And a space force would help with dealing with the ambiguity of a new type of launch architecture like this and obviously deal with overt threats that could find and develop uh, and wish to do any of us harm. To me, any kind of preparation 
we can do for the future, we should do. Is there a good time to create a space for us? Probably not until it's too late, which would be exactly the time we need the use of a space force. I don't have any problem with preparing for the future. In fact, I think it's something we should do. Asteroid impact defense is something we desperately need because we don't really have a good way to defend, never mind find or alert us of such an impact with enough time to do anything about it. There's no need to send Ben Affleck and Bruce Willis to an asteroid if a space force is monitoring them and managing threats of future impacts. My point is, there are plenty of other things other than focusing on war fighting that a space force can be instrumental in. Our space force will have to fight our asteroid impact enemies, both orbitally foreign and domestic, that attempt to annihilate us in a cruel game of orbital roulette that would decimate us just like the dinosaurs. We are at war more with nature in space than we are with any other country in space. Now, do I think the idea of a space force has been sold as this political football? Do I think that many people see it as a partisan issue? Yes. Yes, I do. But that's not any different from any other politics in the past. So instead of focusing on picking a side, I want to make sure we had the conversation and at least get to touch on some other ideas that you might not get elsewhere. So with those thoughts, please let me know what you think in the comments below or by reaching out to us on Twitter at todayinspacepod using the hashtag todayinspace or by emailing us at todayinspacepodcast at gmail.com. We'd really love to hear what you guys think. I am your science communicator, Alex Giorfanos, hoping you spread love and spread science. Thanks for joining in for another episode of the award-winning Space Science Podcast. Have a great week and stay safe.